Welcome to the program today. We are back with some question and answers. Before we jump in today, I want to remind everybody about our Orlando Prophecy Conference, which is coming up in uh, February 29th through March 3rd. We're going to be there with 18 speakers. And so if you haven't had a chance to check that out, go to orlandoprophecysummit.com. It's going to be a great time. Things are happening super, super fast. And if you're unable to join us, then certainly consider joining us through live stream. And you can find that information again at orlandoprophecysummit.com. So here we are. Thank you. Karen, what, what do we got on the agenda here? For today's question, we have, in your opinion, is it an act of cowardice or is it biblically wrong not to particularly desire a martyr's crown? Did Jesus in Matthew 26, 42 indirectly ask the father to remove the cup he had to drink? Matthew 26, 42, he went away a second time and prayed, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will must be done. It kind of seems to me that Jesus was not too keen on the idea, knowing what he must go through for God's will to be accomplished. You know, this is this is fascinating because there there are there are five crowns in the Bible. In thinking about uh, the martyr's crown, um, you find this in, in Revelation two ten and eleven there, where if somebody dies a martyr's death, they will receive the crown of life. And so there's a couple ways to think about this. Um, I think this is a real question. This is an honest question. Hey, uh, is it an act of cowardice not to want that crown? Yeah. I don't want that crown. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is that for somebody who does want that crown, I would turn it around and say, because I think in the, in the realm of screw tape, right? The screw tape <laughs> letters and think of diabolically is um, if I was screw tape, or the enemy, I would be encouraging people, oh, you definitely want that crown. Look how awesome you are. Look how strong you are. Stroking the ego. Stroking the ego. Only you could handle this. And so pride, if somebody wants this crown, I wonder what's motivating it. And most likely it's pride. Um, most likely, not always. I mean, somebody could just, I guess, want to, but even there, it's hard for me to see beyond that. Because even if they, oh, I want to show that, I, I want to show Jesus that I'm committed all the way. I want to show the world that I am committed to the end. I'd give my life and I want to prove my worth that uh, I'm grateful or, or to prove how grateful I am for the Lord saving me. I, I'm willing to give my life. At the end of the day, I don't, I don't know anybody's motive. It was my motive for wanting that. Mm -hmm. Because in reality, the question here is it cowardice. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's, it's necessarily cowardice. Um, because the, 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 the question then would be, should I be seeking this? And I, nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to seek martyrdom. It does tell us that uh, we're to love God with everything. And in Revelation 2.10, you know, Jesus is telling the church there at Smyrna that many of them are going to be cast into prison for 10 days. But he says, you know, be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. So there, that was just a matter of fact. But he didn't say, by the way, seek the crown. Um, and so there's also wisdom, too, if we think about um, what it means to be a martyr. Uh, I think if you, many people are called by God to go and be a missionary in Iran or Pakistan or a Muslim country or even in China, as an example. And, uh, you know, their, their, their motive, you, based on what they say, again, I don't know hearts, is that they want to fulfill the Great Commission. They want to go out and reach, and they feel a, a sense of God's calling them. No doubt God has called people to certain locations, and uh, they end up being a martyr. I don't know whether God said, hey, look, I'm going to, I'm bringing you here specifically for the purpose of you to give your life. Uh, we know that, again, that Revelation 2.10, that Jesus stated a fact that many of them would be, would be brought to the limit, their, their, their goal, what he encouraged them, was to be faithful all the way uh, to death. So it, it really comes down to, it has to depend on what a person feels God is calling them to do. And, uh, but is cowardice involved? I don't think it's cowardice to be, to be humble, because in reality, who wants to go be tortured and abused, uh, for, even for the gospel? Uh, there's nothing wrong with having a natural... Um, 
aversion to that. Right, I mean, that makes right. that makes sense. I think, on the other hand, is if somebody is so fearful of of maybe giving their life, that's normal. But fearful of sharing the gospel or fearful of speaking up for truth, each person God's going to bring. Um, instruction to each person individually, depending on how he's equipped them too. Some people are, again, we're all different. We're all gift, gifted differently. And, and so the some people are bold, others are not. But he brings up here, he's asking the question, does, as this person, it seems that they're, they're being um, potentially convicted, mm. you know, that potentially, I said, not, not definitely, but they're feeling the sense of, well, am I a coward? Well, if I am, then what about Jesus? Because you know you could. Hey, if I could, right. if I could act like Jesus, then you, it assuages your conf- conf- conscience a little bit. But did Jesus show cowardice by asking the Father um, to, if it was His will, to remove the cup? And uh, I think that, that that's a very impow- powerful passage because the. We do see that Jesus said, um, you know, join me. I, I, my soul is sorrowful, even unto death. So no doubt he, he sweat great drops of blood when, when he was in the garden. And so, but the question is, what we don't know is, it, the comment is, was not too keen on the idea of knowing what he must go through for God's will to be accomplished. We, we tend to think in terms of, the punishment, the the scourging, the the beating, the abuse, uh, the whipping, and ultimately getting nails on the cross and and suffocating uh, to death. Uh, crucifixion is a horrible way; is one of the worst ways to die. What we don't know is why was Jesus sorrowful? Was he asking for the cup to pass because he didn't want to be physically abused? I don't necessarily think that's it. Now, I'm not saying that he's looking forward to it. I mean, which, right. which human would be like, oh, I can't wait to go. And I think that what Jesus, the sorrow that was heavy, this, this heavy weight, he said, remember when Peter pulls out his sword? Put your sword away. I could call, I could get 12, 12 legions of angels if, if this is 72,000 angels. I don't need your help, Peter. But this is why I'm here. But one of the things that that we do see on the cross is that Jesus says, my father, my, you know, my, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I think what Jesus' real reluctance was, think about this. We see this in John 17, that Jesus is praying that he would return to the father over and over in the gospel of John. I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm going away. Where I'm going, you can't go. Uh, he says to the crowds and even to the disciples, where I'm going, you can't go. You'll come later. But where was he going in John 14? He was going to the Father's house. In John 17, he, he says, Father, I'm looking forward to being restored back to you with the glory that I had with you before the world was. So what Jesus is, is recognizing that the hour of, of, of his payment on the cross was coming. But think about it in this term. In John 17, he says, Father, you love me before the world was. And so we know they have, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit have this loving relationship for eternity. How long is eternity, we, right? We don't know. Yeah. But now Jesus is approaching this day when he's going to be on the cross. For the first time in the history of God, he's going to be separated from his Father. That God is actually going to turn away and have this this eternal separation from his son that is squeezed down into six hours. However, the God can do that. Jesus is eternal in his deity. So however they worked that out, but Jesus was on the cross for six hours. So in that, in that six hour, six hours, the punishment for sin, which is an eternal separation, was squeezed down for all of those that would believe in him, right? It's squeezed down. This infinite amount of time is put down on Jesus in that six hours. I think that's what Jesus was concerned about. Not so much the physical things, not that he enjoyed that, but he's like, I'm going to be separated from this relationship that he had. That's more in line of what I think. And even at the end, after the separation was over, he, he, he took on the wrath of God, this eternal wrath for that six hours. He, he could say, it is finished. 
Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So he, that, that six hours of punishment, which again was eternity, because we have an eternal debt, was put on him there. It was over. It was paid. It was finished. And then he gets to say, it, Father, now I get to return to you. In, in, your, in, in, in your hands I commit my spirit. So that when he comes down and, and that day he goes into to Hades. Hades has the good side and the bad side. We've done other uh, Q&As on this before. People can look those up. He's not going down there to be punished. He's going down there, today you'll be with me in paradise, he says to the thief on the cross. So he just he's there for three days uh, into the heart of the earth in Matthew 12, verse 40. So, But the real issue is not that Jesus was cowardly about the, the death, the physical death part of it, I don't think. I think it was the spiritual side. Again, think about that. Just think about that phrase. The first time in the history of God. How long is that? Yeah. Right? We don't know. Who, I mean, it's just eternity. He was separated. I think that was what his concern was. So in reality, I don't think it's cowardice. Uh, I don't think Jesus was being a coward either. Uh, I think that he was... That separation mm -hmm. was just so intimate with the Father that he couldn't bear the idea of that being gone for even an instant, and yet he endured it. He endured it, yep. yeah. Beautiful, beautiful answer to a really interesting question. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to be watching for future questions and answers with Mondo.